Okay, it is one o'clock. So I'm gonna go ahead and start because we have quite a bit of information to roll through today. Uh, first and foremost, welcome and thank you for joining today's webinar uh, between Avid and LiveView, uh, focusing on both Media Central Stream, the workflows that are enabled and our partnership with LiveView and what LiveView brings to the table. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with LiveView, but if you're not, you're gonna learn more about it today. Um, and we'll show you a workflow. Uh, we'll give you a live demo of how everything works. So welcome and thank you. Uh, to everyone for being here today. At the end of this webinar, you should have a good understanding of A, what Media Central Stream is, uh, two, the AVID and LiveView partnership, uh, the workflows that are now enabled by the combined offering, and then last but not least, the benefits uh, of the solution. The agenda for today's webinar will include introductions, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, we'll talk about the Media Central Stream announcement, which happened earlier in the year, um, and then we'll talk about the AVID and LiveView partnership and like I said, the workflows, we'll cover the benefits and at the end, we'll uh, take on some questions. So here is the uh, distinguished panel we have on today. My name is Ray Thompson. I'm the Senior Director here at Avid for Partner in Industry Marketing and we have a fantastic panel for you today. Uh, I wanna welcome George Klippel. George, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, hi everybody, my name is George Klippel. I'm a Director of Channel Sales at LiveU and welcome. Looking forward to a great session today. Thanks, George. And then we also have Luis Munoz. Luis, would you please introduce yourself? Hey, guys. This is Luis Munoz. I've been uh, here at LiveView for, uh, what, about uh, almost four years, and I'll be uh, doing the, uh, the, the LiveView piece. I'm doing a quick demo on that. Excellent. Thanks, Luis. And then last but certainly not least, Anthony Dragon. Anthony. Hey, my name is Anthony Dragon, a Senior Product Specialist for Avid Technology, and I will be your tour guide on this wonderful world of Media Central uh, stream. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. We'll be hearing from all of those guys here once we get going. Uh, just real quick logistics. If you have a question, uh, use the Q&A uh, button in your, uh, in your uh, toolbar there at the top. Feel free to ask questions throughout. We have multiple folks on the line from both LiveU and Avid who will answer those questions in the Q&A uh, throughout the course of the presentation. But uh, like I said, we'll also take a few questions at the end um, to answer for the group. Uh, so real quick, just to kind of set the table uh, for everybody, Certainly pre-pandemic, there was a significant amount of folks who were already leveraging uh, the benefits of LiveView and certainly contribution over IP and or bonded cellular uh, in order to not only scale their production and, and enable them to basically cover more with fewer resources, um, but certainly uh, lower costs uh, just in general, right? And so uh, the phenomenon is certainly not a recent one. It's been around for quite some time. The pandemic certainly has accelerated the use of these technologies um, and we've seen that uh, not only uh, from talking to customers, but certainly uh, in data uh, from the pandemic itself from multiple different studies. Long story short, streaming has been uh, become sort of the go-to way in terms of how companies are, are handling things like acquisition for news and sports and certainly remote live production. Um, at one point in time, you know, uh, sending your content over the internet uh, was, you know, a scary proposition. Um, because of all the protocols that are uh, available and certainly the LRT protocol um, that has changed. These are secure protocols that build a number of techniques in order to basically manage packet uh, loss and jitter in order to deliver a very viable stream using, as I said, either bonded cellular or uh, Wi-Fi or both. Um, and so we've certainly seen a lot of these trends. And again, the flexibility it's providing for media organizations is tremendous. Um, and again, it's allowing folks to basically cover more with less. This has also been a, a key trend in sort of accelerating not only the uh, move to the cloud, but it's also been accelerating things like as a service type business models. And so being able to do contribution, not just on-prem, which you can do with Media Central Stream and LiveView, but also being able to enable cloud-based workflows are just a few of the things we'll cover today. So what is uh, Media Central Stream? Media Central Stream we rolled out back at the beginning of this year. Media Central Stream is a software only agnostic tool set. It basically enables the contribution of IP streams into Avid production environments. Essentially, we can take in either an SRT or RTMP uh, protocol today. And the plan is to expand those protocols over time. Um, it's very easy to deploy. It's on a lightweight uh, VM server. Um, and that means because it's virtualized, it can run not only on-prem for uh, sort of on-prem production environments, but it can also run in the cloud. We are able to uh, then take the resulting uh, incoming stream, and then we basically transcode it to a number of different flavors 
uh, XDCAM, DNX, AAF, um, and then different bit rates as well are supported. Uh, and then that gets checked into the Avid production environment. And then everything downstream, any of you folks who are out there who are using Avid technology uh, today, uh, either, either Media Composer or Media Central Cloud UX or uh, Production Asset Management, um, that downstream workflow for you does not change. This just becomes another source uh, for you to basically manage uh, and use, right, as a growing file. So if you're doing growing file editing using, say, traditional SDI feeds coming in over satellite, well, you're doing the same thing now, but you're doing so through IP. Um, and so LiveView uh, and Avid have combined to make the entire process a lot easier. Uh, and I'm going to get into that in a moment. But basically, Media Central Stream, software only, agnostic tool set, supports both on-prem and cloud-based workflows. Um, it's a virtual ingest device. And I said, as I said, it's uh, today capable of taking in both SRT and RTMP. We're recording uh, a variety of different flavors and formats, which also is getting uh, increased as we go along. Um, we're uh, compatible with both H.264 and H.265, which are both supported in terms of streams coming in. And then we can then take that content and transcode it into those different flavors I mentioned. And then once it's in uh, to the system, it's being checked in, you can use it as a growing file downstream, either Media Central Cloud UX or Media Composer to do basically fast turnaround workflows for either linear or digital broadcasts. In terms of uh, some of the key benefits here, you know, before this relationship existed, um, if you wanted to do something like this, you, you could. It was it was uh, required quite a bit of technical calisthenics, if you will, in order to make it work. Um, and so we've eliminated uh, the need for any more of those calisthenics. You can now uh, directly ingest content uh, through uh, what's called the LiveView connector, which hands off SRT from a receive unit, a LiveView receive unit, um, and then hands it off to Media Central Stream. And then Media Central Stream does all those things that I mentioned. So really what we're doing is simplifying the entire process, making it seamless and enabling a much faster turnaround in terms of the workflows. Um, and as you'll see in the demo, uh, there's a variety of different tool sets inside of Media Central Stream. You can support up to four channels per VM. Um, and I would expect over time that that's gonna definitely grow. And then uh, you'll, you're able to sort of manage a variety of different settings and Tony's gonna walk you through all of that. Um, he'll also show you what it looks like as you're writing a file uh, from within Media Central Stream. So some of the key things here are being able to record the incoming streams and in common compressed IP protocols. Of course, the LRT protocol with a handoff of SRT between the receive unit of LiveView and Media Central Stream, supporting both on-prem and cloud-based workflows. We're enabling media to be edited while the recording is going on, just like any other file you're collecting uh, and writing to Nexus. Um, and then you can certainly preview all the incoming streams. And then we're uh, deploying and, and enabling both on-prem and cloud-based workflows. And this is uh, at a high level what, the, what that kind of workflow looks like. So you start out with any one of these live units, sending it over commodity internet and or across a bonded cellular. And then you're sending it to a live view connector, which is sitting as part of the receive unit, which is handing off SRT to meet essential stream, writing it to Avid Nexus and making it available to the tool sets, Media Composer and Media Central Cloud UX, either on-prem or in the cloud. And then once you're uh, done, you can certainly use that content to either publish to social media uh, and or a digital platform, or certainly deliver to uh, a linear platform as well. So we're enabling a whole new host of different capabilities, enabling media companies to basically cover more with less. And by combining the new offerings here and making it much more seamless, we're making it much easier to manage incoming IP feeds from LiveView. So real quick, I'm gonna play a, a very quick synopsis of what Media Central Stream is, and then we'll get into the next phase. Streams, camera cards, satellite, studio, bonded cellular, edge devices, the ever-increasing array of incoming source options challenge new stations of every size. A critical challenge has been a fast and seamless way to get streaming formats quickly into the hands of users, particularly if a customer wants to work in the cloud. Software based and deployed on premises or in the cloud, Media Central Stream handles the most common streaming formats of SRT and RTMP to get media securely to your team to turn around stories faster than ever to any platform. There's also integration with the widely used bonded cellular platform LiveView. Lowering your overall cost and running on premises or in the Azure cloud, 
Media Central Stream lets you scale. It's a simple, reliable and secure way to capitalize on the latest media ingest workflows. Okay, so there's a quick run through of uh, sort of Media Central Stream. And like I said, you're gonna see a demo live in a moment. Um, you know, we're really excited to, when we went uh, to market with Media Central Stream uh, to partner with LiveView. Certainly LiveView has been broadly adopted within the industry uh, and really touches all different uh, parts of production, including sports, uh, live news and uh, remote live production, as well as even post, right? We have folks who are interested on the post side of things in this partnership as well. Um, and we're really excited to have had the opportunity to not only work very closely with their development team in order to enable this capability, but we've also now been heavily engaged uh, with their go-to-market and sales teams as well. Um, and it's been fantastic um, on a number of fronts. So I first and foremost want to thank LiveView uh, for the partnership. And I also want to uh, sort of uh, impart on all of you that uh, what we're doing today, uh, again, drives much higher efficiency, enables broader coverage, and it does so at a much lower cost uh, in a much more seamless application. So uh, with that, I want to say thank you to uh, the folks at LiveView. And I'm going to hand it over to George, who's going to now walk you through uh, the LiveView components and talk about uh, some of the pieces and parts that are part of the solution. George, welcome. Hey, Ray, thanks a lot. And uh, I want to echo that as well. We're really happy with working with Avid and uh, the partnership that we have with Media Central Stream and uh, enabling this bonded IP workflow. So um, it's very exciting. and. Let's uh, jump right into it and we'll uh, get to the demo after a couple of slides. So uh, I know that's what everybody's waiting to see. Again, my name is George Klippel with LiveView and uh, let's go ahead and uh, start. So first off, um, uh, we're really talking about cloud, cloud workflows and working with uh, the new SRT protocol. But for some of you that don't know who we are, who LiveView is, um, you know, we're really the world leader in live IP video technology, uh, delivering end-to-end -end solutions um, that distribute, you know, content from point A to point B. Uh, we are the inventor and patent holder of live video over bonded IP. Some people call it bonded cellular networks, but it's really bonded IP. Uh, we have a technology called LRT, a live view reliable transport. And that's one of the things that we've been using with RTMP to get into an AVID workflow for a few years now. So it's something that uh, we've been doing and working with AVID for a while. Um, we've got award-winning hardware based on 4K HEVC technology. And we've developed our very first unit that's a multi-cam unit that's native 5G from the ground up. We'll be talking about that in a little bit more. Um, and just a load of technology. So again, industry leader, and uh, we're glad to be working with another industry leader like Avid. Um, when you look at uh, live, uh, live View and you look at how we're kind of configured and what our, you know, our units are that are out there, we've got over 20,000 units globally, over 4,000 end user uh, customers, and they're just using a ton of tent, uh, content. We have almost 965 or about that terabytes of monthly live transmit uh, missions, uh, over 20 million live sessions, and uh, it just keeps on growing. And you know, our, our content and our solutions are used not just for live news, which is where we cut our teeth when we started in 2006, but for sports, corporate and enterprise coverage, post-production, uh, and many verticals that you find Avid Technology Solutions used for. for. From a partnership perspective, it's really clear that it's a perfect match for us. And as I mentioned, this uh, LRT and how the technology is put together, essentially what we do is we combine all of our bonded technology uh, in our backpacks, in our solutions, you connect it to a camera or the output of a switcher, and we create a big fat pipe to the internet. And our bonding is uh, sending the output to a server, physical or a cloud server. And then we output all of that to a TV station, a broadcast, uh, a control room, or to an online destination like a CDN, or even to uh, a network partner through our live view matrix, which you'll be seeing a little bit in the demo coming up with Tony and Lewis. Um, and I did mention a, a bunch of customers, they're traditional TV stations, sports and brands that you know, online media customers, over 4,000 of them in 140 different countries and growing. So enough about us on the back end about what we do, but one of the new tools that we brought to the fore um, at LiveView is our brand new LU800. Uh, this is the unit that um, 
many people are using now that just came out is the first unit ever that has four inputs into one device. So four SDI inputs that you can actually um, use as one, two, three, or four at any given time. You can send these out as four individual feeds back to a station and switch them on the fly, or you can actually switch on the device and send a switched feed back to a control room or the station. It produces 4K P60 10-bit HDR and has 16 audio channels. And this is a, a device that was from the ground built up natively based on 5G technology. And um, again, it's a wonderful uh, solution uh, that works and will work in this SRT workflow that we're uh, talking about. And this is our newest unit in the market that would be uh, used in this workflow. So it's a wonderful piece of technology. And when we talk about the seamless cloud-based production workflow that we're uh, working with with uh, Avid today, it's natively integrating solutions in the cloud content for production and distribution, right? So it's capturing using this LU800 or other tools like our LU300 with 5G, bonding it together with our uh, LRT patented technology, and then sending it out to ingest. And we can do it a couple of different ways, as we mentioned and, and Ray mentioned earlier, RTMP, uh, we can do NDI even, or SRT, and SRT is the newest one for us, right? Then we can produce it in the cloud. So we have multiple integrated platforms providing cloud-based and real-time uh, production tools. So you can do things like live stream, easy live, boxcast, you name it. You could do editing, switching, clipping, publishing, graphics, and then distribution on the distribution side, uh, we have LiveView Matrix, which Lewis is going to talk a little bit about, about uh, more uh, in just a minute during the demo piece. But that enables mass distribution of your content to any destination you want to go uh, go to. So it can be from uh, ONOs sharing content amongst each other on the broadcast side, or it can be from government agencies putting up content to share uh, to other agencies or to uh, broadcast stations as well. Uh, but it's a really nice seamless transition uh, for our workflow. And we did recently just join the SRT Alliance and uh, you know, cloud-based workflows are a huge importance to us going forward. And we see the industry moving in that direction. And that's one of the reasons, again, that we wanted to partner with Avid. You know, it's an important enabler for us um, and enabler for cloud workflows for sure. And that's another reason that uh, LiveView wanted to get on board with the, the SRT Alliance. And you know, it allows us to convert the bonding wireless uh, optimized LRT protocol that we've used for our, you know, the, the years that we've been founded. That's our, uh, uh, again, bonded uh, solution that we patented at the LRT. Um, and it, it allows us to optimize it into SRT for on-prem or in your cloud or um, onto uh, our cloud. So, it's a really great workflow for us, and we're happy that we're finally able to introduce it and have that ability for anybody to use it, especially in the Avid workflow environment. And it's easy to do. And enough of me talking about it. Uh, it's time to show you how easy it is to do uh, in the Live View environment and then bringing it into the Avid Media Central platform environment. So I'd like to bring in Luis, uh, Luis Munoz, which many of you know on this call probably, who also used to work with Avid as well as myself. And uh, Luis and uh, Anthony uh, Dragon are gonna do the demo now so you can kind of see what this looks like and this workflow looks like. So Luis, are you ready on your end to take over? You are muted my friend, but I hope you're All ready. Right, yes, I'm ready. Okay, so you can uh, take over a sharing of the screen there and uh, Go ahead and show everybody how it works on the live view side, and then we'll transition over to Tony for the uh, for the live uh, or the Avid side. So thanks. All right. All right. So hopefully everybody can see my uh, my desktop now. So should be able to see the uh, uh, LU Central, which is our which is our web portal for yes. uh, accessing the the um, uh, the acquisition uh, piece of of the uh, of this overall workflow, right? So with uh, make sure uh, George, you guys able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. So, so the part of the acquisition uh, is, is obviously where we're going to have the our encoders, right? So we'll have either an LU800, uh, 200s, 300s, 600s, uh, depending on what encoder you're going to have. So that's essentially going to be out on the field. So the idea is to get our get our our, our content that's out on the field uh, over to um, uh, to the station. Uh, not only get it to the station for broadcasting live, 
uh, also uh, the idea is to also be able to get that content to Avid. So in this particular uh, scenario, so what I have here is I have I have four four actual encoders. Um, so I have three of them that are already running now, and then I've got video going into them now. Uh, so I can select the encoder, um, and I've got a four channel server here. So if I go over to my to my uh, my quad server, uh, it's a single it's a single server with four individual channels. So the idea is that we want to be able to get this content um, uh, to the station, but also get it to Avid uh, at the same time. So what we what we're able to do here is I'm able to go in here and and go into the into the streaming configuration and set an SRT output. So the idea is I'm going to get an SRT output and also have uh, uh, that that same decoder uh, uh, also uh, actually decode uh, an SDI output. So uh, in in essence, we're going to have uh, this actual decoder is going to actually uh, be decoding four separate streams, four SDI streams and four SRT streams simultaneously. So the nice thing is you'll be able to to, to have that one encoder is going to be able to take that stream and, and take it live. So if you have a, a newscast or, or whatever it is that you have, somebody that's remote uh, out on the field will be able to, to broadcast that live. Uh, but at the same time, you'll be able to send that uh, over to your NLE uh, workflow. So once it's configured, so really I, I just go in here, go to stream, enable that. Um, uh, we'll set the, the configuration. So there's some ports that we need to configure. Uh, obviously, our, our, um, our, our, so we need to also set the, uh, the public IP and, and get the routing correct. So once I, I have this, essentially what I, uh, the way that we worked with, uh, with, Anthony, with, with Tony to get this configured is I have the ports. So I would tell him uh, my public IP address, obviously uh, the port and then the, the encryption key. Right, so I'll, I'll assign that uh, encryption key uh, to whatever I want, uh, and then to test this, you can also obviously uh, uh, you know check it through a VLC or whatever it is that you want to you, you want to be able to see that stream. So I, I've got this configured, right? SRT, uh, the port 65532, encryption key is is, is one uh, ten times, and then pretty much once that's set, we just simply hit OK, go back to the unit. And simply all I have to do is, is adjust my, my delay. So this is basically the, uh, the encoder, and this is kind of where I tell it where I want it to go to. So I'm, gonna, I'm telling it I want to go to quad port one. Uh, I'm seeing here that it's a 720p signal, with, uh, which is HVC. Uh, set the delay. I've got all my, my modems. Uh, uh, so what, right now what we're using is, is uh, uh, kind of an IP uh, bonded uh, technology. So we're not only using the, the modems, but we're also using a Wi-Fi connection, right? Uh, and if I wanted to, I could also have an Ethernet connection here, so I can make it a more robust uh, connection. So I could have e Ethernet, all the modems, and um, uh, the Wi-Fi connection. And I could even do uh, what we call, uh, if I go in, up in here, I can do a least cost bonding. So I could say, okay, I, I you know, I'm I'm at, I'm at a location where I have a good internet connection. I want to use my Ethernet connection first. Uh, because it's it, it's obviously you know there's not there's there's it's going to be less expensive to, to use the Ethernet and Wi-Fi first, and then you can prioritize that accordingly, right? So you can you can also set the your your um, priority here and say okay I, I have uh, you know I want my my Ethernet one to have priority one, and then my cell phone and my cell, and then that, if it if it drops below a certain threshold, then it, it'll the the next one will kick in if I wanted to do that that way. Okay. Otherwise, it's just going to kind of use all the the modems, all the the connections, and and just use kind of every, every one of the modems that, that can that can connect. It's gonna it's gonna utilize that 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 connection. So, anyways, I want to go ahead and get that started. All right. So now we we can see that an HVC signal is going to give it, it's going to require about four megs, a little over four megs of bandwidth to get a a good uh, a quality video going. So I've got a one second delay. Uh, and now we can see that it's streaming now. Okay, if I expand this, I can see kind of more detail on on kind of what what uh, what it is that we're using now, right? So it'll you'll see the uh, the, the information there. So now what what uh, now what we want to do is we want to be able to, to see uh, what we're sending out. We can see that over uh, on on Tony's end. So we'll we'll, we'll uh, hold off on that real quick. I just want to kind of show you the, the several ways of of getting the content uh, on the acquisition side. And getting it over to to Avid, so that's really all we need to do on this part. Now, there's another tool that uh, that uh, that George was mentioning, which is called Matrix. So, Matrix is another tool that we use uh, that allows us to get content over. So, let's say, for example, we have uh, feeds, uh, we have content from CNN or or, or um, 
uh, NBC or, or, or CBS, uh, Fox, any one of those that have content, we can, we can go into the news feeds here and we can simply route that content into, uh, into that encoder. And as long as we set that encoder up to, to point to the uh, AVID uh, workflow, then it's just simply gonna send that SRT feed and then they'll be able to take that feed um, and, and, and view that feed and, and, and record that into, into their NLE uh, uh, end. Um, and that's pretty much it on that. So again, a matrix is really, you can kind of think of matrix kind of as a, as a cloud-based router. So you can see all the content here and just simply route that content into your, in, into the, your decoders here. So you have all your receivers and so forth. Um, I think that's pretty much it on my end. Uh, if any, anybody has any questions, I'll go ahead and push this over to Anthony so he can kind of show you uh, the content that I have uh, from uh, LiveView here. So, so what we're expecting to see is, is, our, is our shameless plug here, sh shameless video uh, for uh, the LU800. So we should be able to see that uh, on Anthony's side. So let's, let's take it over to Anthony and, and uh, see, see how he's doing. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Right here, and I just wanted to start off just with a really just one picture here uh, with the Media Central stream architecture on what I am currently using today. Um, so what uh, we're seeing here on the screen, that big purple box in the middle is my Media Central stream of VM. Um, I am using VM technology here. It is an on-prem on system located in Burlington, Massachusetts. Um, you can see over here on the left hand side, we will be taking the stream in going through the media central stream and then today I will be sending this to my avid nexus. So that is my shared storage in the middle of everything here. And then we will go ahead and view everything via the media central production management system. Um, <clears throat> but things in the purple box here on the inside are what we can do today. Uh, the gray boxes down here on the bottom stuff that is in progress or coming soon things like the NDI, AVCI codec, um, not just working with OpAtom, but working with OP1A and non-AVID storage. Those are some things that we're working on for the future. Um, but today we are going to be taking in an SRT stream. Um, I believe we'll be recording it to XDCAM and then saving it to the Nexus. So I have this system already set up and running on the network. So you pop in the IP address into your browser, you get to the login page, and let's go ahead and log in to the Media Central stream right here. And I've settled here on the video engine tabs here. You can see that there are tabs over here in the upper right-hand corner to go through the different windows. Uh, the first one's the video engine. This is where you would configure your input channels. You can see I have four input channels currently. Um, in the future that may be expanded out to include more input channels per box, but currently we're just using four. And that is a licensable feature. So you license it per channel. So if you only want a one channel device, you would only license one channel and these other three would disappear. So um, in my case here, I have it licensed for all four channels. And of course, you know, you can hit the X there to get rid of the channels if you don't want them showing up. So, you know, why have them show up if you don't have them licensed? like that. You can see here right off the top it says everything's online, the channels are idle, so you get good feedback on the availability of the system. And if we come over here and look at some of the system settings, again, you'll be able to see the licensing right here on what kind of count you have left. Um, also with the mounts, you can see currently I am um, set up to use my Nexus file system, my AVID system right here. Um, you can kind of see I've got the little SIFS mount down here that I can add, but again, that is coming in a future release right now. Uh, the system will actually go out and check the storage too and give you these little icons to let you know what's available and what is not available on here. So if something's going on with your storage or something like that, you'll be able to see right off the top here that you have a problem with your storage so you can create uh, correct the problems I like that. Uh, we'll go ahead and switch over to the remote console. So this is where I would control the incoming sources and stuff like that. Um, we do ingest templates and routing templates. So this first routing template right here is where you would set up your streams. I will use one of the ones that we're gonna be uh, using today. You can see here that you just give it a name, you give it the IP address, the port number, and that passphrase that uh, Luis has set up earlier in his demo. 
Um, I've got that built into a profile right here. But if I wanted to make changes, I can just go ahead and step in there and make some changes and click save on that. So if the port number changes or the passphrase changes, um, I can go ahead and make those changes. Set close. Or I can just flat out create a new one. Pop something in here like that. Create it. And then again, fill in the, fill in the blanks here and go. Same with ingest templates. So once we have the routing established, you'll want to be able to tell the system, you know, what to capture and where to put it. So that is defined by ingest templates. Again, you can have things like set duration. So if you create a record and you only want it to go for four hours, an hour, whatever, you can set a duration on there. You can drop down uh, what codec that you want. You can see here currently we're supporting DNX flavors and XD cam. Others are coming in the future, like that. And also change your resolution and your frame rate right there. So when you design these templates, you can pick your codec, how you want it recorded and in what size and frame rate. So full path, this is a path to my shared storage right here. Again, currently mine is pointing to my Nexus right here. So everything that I record is going to my central storage uh, for my Avid Nexus storage so that everyone can access it at the same time. And down here is just where you define, you know, your Nexus file system and what workspace, aka folders, you know, where you want to put it on your system. You can do things like enable check-in. So if you have a database on this system and you want it to be able to check into that database, you turn on that tick box right there. That will enable you to check that recording feed into a database and do things like edit while capture, meaning you can start to access this video before the recording process is complete. And you can, you know, a couple other options there. You can also do intervals to where if you wanted this thing to chunk out every you know, hour, 10 minutes, whatever, you can put in an interval right there. And this section right down here on the bottom is for the database check-in. So you can point it to a database that I have here and point it to a particular folder so you can organize yourself in that database like that. So once you have all your templates, <clears throat> excuse me, set up to use them, all you do is come over here and you choose a routing source you can choose one from the template right here. So we'll just put channel one and channel one here. You can see it gives me a quick pop of the IP address, port and passcode and everything, just so I can make sure everything's okay. Come across here like that, and then we'll do it again. So turn on channel two here like that. You can see it's coming in like that. And I believe we have three channels set up. So let's go ahead and set those all up right here. like that, and then on the fourth channel, like that. So again, I think I've got a little connection error. Um, Luis, hopefully that channel is still on. Try that one more time. Yes, yes, all there we go. So we've got them coming up right here. So you see them popped in. Now to record. Uh, one thing I can do is go into my crash record settings right here. You can see on those uh, ingest profiles, you can go ahead and set a default profile right here. So if I just wanted to hurry up and grab this channel, click record, and that default profile is automatically applied. And you can kind of see here with the overlay, it tells me that it's using XDCAM 50 megabit at 1920 by 1080 at 2997 frame rate like that. So that's the, that's the default profile right there, like that going ahead and being recorded into the system. If I wanted a little more control over that uh, ingest profile, I can just click new recording right here. And then I'll choose that same profile, but you can see it comes up. So if I wanted to modify things, I can. I can send it to a different location. Here, I can give it a different file name. Something like that. And you'll notice I've got the dollar signs over here. If I roll over real quick, you'll notice on the right-hand side there, it will give me a little legend on what those different uh, dollar sign uh, letters mean as far as auto you know, file naming. You know, dollar sign D will put in a date. Um, you know, dollar sign C will do the channel, stuff like that. So you can add a little bit of, um, you know, quick little identifiers right there like that. So you can make changes to a template, click record, and then the process will kick off again.
like that. So right now we are taking this SRT stream. Um, we're actually taking two of them, recording them, and then moving them down to the Avid Nexus storage. That part right there. And so while this recording is going on, let's go ahead and take a quick peek at the Media Central Cloud UX. So I'm just going to switch over to tabs in a browser, and I'm going to go point to my Media Central Cloud UX system. This is my, you know, this is the platform into, you know, Media Central Cloud UX, browser-based. Um, this allows me to go in, view stuff on my storage, searching, sorting, um, you know, light editing inside of a browser here. Uh, username and password gets me into the system. It's going to go ahead and check it in and display all of my databases that are configured with this system. Now, today we are going to be using this one right here, the Interplay Production System. But of course, you know, with a Media Central Cloud UX system, I can see all databases that I have configured, whether it's an archive database, graphic database, newsroom database. Um, I have the advantage of finding everything um, under one common user interface, which is very handy. Uh, going across the top here real quick is what we call the apps bar. So once I find something in my database and I want to do something with it, whether that's edit, search, view, you, you know, create, write, you name it, I would pick one of these apps going across the top and then manipulate the video. So for example, in this case, we're going to switch to the browse app. We are just going to simply go into the section where the video is and that's in the stream. And you can see here up at the top, these are my incoming feeds. And I know they're incoming feeds by this icon right here is kind of a sliced film strip icon that is giving me the creator uh, just a visual cue that this is a recording feed. Okay. So I can double click on it though, doesn't matter. And it will load it up and play it out for me. You can kind of see here that little hashy marks right there is letting me again, another visual cue to let me know that this is a recording in progress. But if I, it's a six hour feed, so that gray line is gonna be very big. So if I zoom in here into the real time section, you can see that the stuff that is available to me is in green and it's kind of flashing a little bit. That's just to let me know that this is a recording feed and these are the frames I got so far. If I step beyond, you'll see that capture in progress. Uh, we haven't quite figured out the quantum physics to get that to record faster than real time, but maybe one of these days. But every single frame that comes in will be available to me almost instantly. And you can see that green bar growing right now. So this is my live uh, SRT stream coming in from Media Central Stream being recorded to my central storage. And this allows me to bring it up. I can edit it. I can then come in here, make notes on it. And I can even come in here and start selecting in and out points, pop up a timeline from the bottom of this browser, drag and drop and start editing content all while this SRT stream is still being captured. I'll just do one more little quick edit right there like this, in, out, drag, drop. So you can see that I can easily take that live view stream, get it in, triage it out, put it to a timeline and then push it into an edit bay. And then just real quick, one other topic I wanted to cover here. This is me inside of an edit bay. So I really quickly just Terry Dicci'd into one of my edit bays located in Burlington. And we're gonna go ahead and look at the streams coming in here. So that same folder that we found in the browser, here it is inside of the editor, right? Again, this is Media Central um, UX in action. Uh, that same stuff that's available to me in a browser is available to me in the edit bay. There's our live streams right there. Double click on it, loads it up, and allows me to play that same stream directly inside of the edit bay, all while it's still being recorded. And that quality right there looks fantastic. So that's my demo in a nutshell. Um, if there's, I'll turn it back over to the group. If there's any questions, uh, please let me have them. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. That was fantastic. And thank you, Luis. Uh, so as you guys can see, right, you can capture directly uh, over IP uh, from live view units directly into uh, Avid production environments using the essential stream. Um, we're uh, very excited, right, about this workflow and all the possibilities that are now enabled. Um, and so what I wanted to do just real quick here is uh, just cover some of the key benefits here. Um, so certainly what, what you're seeing uh, today is uh, a combined effort by both companies. The 
Media Central Stream, as Tony pointed out, has up to four channels today. If you want to scale that to more, you just add another VM, and now you'll be able to do uh, double the amount of channels. Um, and the particular connector, the connector itself that's available inside of uh, the Lineu unit, that is an add-on to existing hardware. And uh, George, let me know if I'm speaking out of school there or not, but, but folks who already have a Live U LU unit for receiving incoming LRT streams, they simply add the connector and the connector is what's actually then handing off the SRT to Media Central Stream. Um, and then if you don't uh, have an LU 2000 or, or 4K unit yet, you can just order it with this capability as part of the uh, offering. So that's how you take advantage of it today. Another key point is that Media Central Stream uh, is certainly um, available as a VM and it runs with Media Central Cloud UX and the production environment, but you don't need to have uh, Cloud UX in the production environment to have Media Central Stream, meaning it runs independently. So you can run, it as, as I mentioned, on prem or in the cloud, and you can actually write AAF files and then import AAF files into Media Composer as an example of an alternative workflow. The other thing that uh, I think was important that Tony just showed was not only being available uh, as growing files inside of Media Central Cloud UX, but he showed you how to access that via Media Composer with what we call the panel for Media Central Cloud UX. So uh, tons of possibilities. And like I said, downstream, once you're writing the file, there's really no difference in the workflow for folks who are using Avid tool sets to basically produce news, sports, live entertainment, or post production type uh, content. Um, and being able to then deliver that content quickly to multiple different platforms, linear, digital, and social uh, is all uh, done very quickly. As you could see, Tony was editing uh, content as it was coming in and still being written. Uh, so with that, uh, what I want to see is um, a couple questions that have come up here. So uh, you guys are live outgoing. So good question. So in terms of being able to send content live out of uh, Media Central Stream, that's not there yet, but it will be. Uh, so that is definitely a request for multiple folks to be able to basically stream the content uh, out of Media Central Stream as well. Uh, so you can certainly uh, look for that in the future. If the send receive frame rates don't match, will the system convert to the newly desired format on the fly? Good question. I don't know. Anthony or Al, do you guys know that one? I think Al is on the phone. If not, I can come back to that one. Um, uh, well, I know I know that if the frame rate's different on the incoming stream, you can set up you know a specific you know resolution and frame rate. So Media Central Stream can essentially convert the frame rate for you on the way in. Gotcha. Okay, good. Thanks, Anthony. And then this one's actually for you. What's the delay to start editing the file from the beginning of the feed to the next storage? Uh, when you're talking about uh, like that edit while capture, a uh, good rule of thumb is, is somewhere around 20 seconds, I think. Um, that gives it enough time to get content on the drives to buffer up and be able to have a, a, a very good experience with the edit while capture. Excellent. All right, that looks like all the questions. Does anybody else have any other well, we had some uh, Ray in the chat window as well. So, oh, great. We got some more in the chat. Yeah. So, in the chat window, we had a couple that were uh, how much do the live view units weigh at this point? Uh, the LU300 weighs between two and three uh, pounds. The LU800 and 600 are anywhere between five and eight pounds. I think the LU600 is around five. The 800 is closer to eight uh, pounds. And that's with the backpack included with the gear and, and uh, the cables and everything else. Um, and then we were asked, uh, let's see, uh, fully charged battery on the 300. Um, it is giving you about uh, three hours battery life and the internal battery on the 600 and 800, correct me if I'm wrong, Lewis, but that's about four hours. Right, right. Yeah, you, you'll all... get about three or four hours on, on, on each, on all the encoders. And then we also have a V-mount and Anton Bauer uh, battery uh, connector as well for those units if you want to use those. And I think this is uh, for you, uh, Tony. Could you mix in and out from different clips? Yes, absolutely. Any video file that is in the production system, you can, you know, as long as they're all the same resolution and frame rate, you can mix and match them on the timeline. Okay. Then we had... Uh, Someone asked, uh, can you clarify LRT, that's the Live View Reliable Transport and SRT, and could this be streamlined using only one protocol? Um, and LRT, uh, that was answered by Lewis, if you wanna answer that uh, real quick. Yeah, sure, so so the um, the LRT is, is, is uh, really the, our, kind of our proprietary um, uh, 
what we use basically to get the content from the backpack out to the uh, to our decoder, right? So we have a we have an encoder which is our backpacks, and then we have a decoder which is the server that's going to be at the station. So the uh, so the server is what's actually going to be splicing the the content together. So so th that's what we use the LRT content uh, or the LRT protocol for. Um, once we send that out, then we're going to either spit it out as a an SDI output, right? Or and at the same time we can we can send out a um, uh, an, 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 uh, uh, you can actually do an RTMP feed, uh, SRT, uh, or whatever it is you want. But you, but at the same time, you can do you can do both. Uh, again, uh, SDI output on the physical decoders, and at the same time, you can do um, uh, RTMP or SRT. Yeah, and you can NDI. also yeah or NDI. Yeah, exactly. So once once our encoder, the 600, the 800, 300 hits that decoder, that's where we're going to send that SRT stream that they showed in the demo out to Avid. And that's the, the main difference there. But it's also available to send out multiple other formats, too, from that decoder, as uh, Lewis just mentioned. Um, and then um, the other question follow up to that was, does that mean the live view product can be used in this pipeline, including the solo? Uh, the solo can't be used in this pipeline because the solo, while it does use LRT, solo only streams RTMP out. Uh, and it does not go to a server, a physical server, that, as a decoder. Uh, so today, it does not. Uh, the solo does not stream output uh, as an SRT uh, type of uh, workflow. So, right. And then uh, we got another one that said, uh, "Can you stream and feed live video to air at the same time?" Um, so yeah, the answer to that is yes, uh, Rit. So so you can. So so that's where I was talking about. You'll have the SDI output coming out of the server. Uh, and at the same time, you can send that that um, that that stream that's coming from the backpack simultaneously send that to uh, to the Avid workflow. And then, and then we had. Oh, sorry. Oh. Uh, just going back to that question that I think Adam asked earlier um, in terms of the uh, frame rates if they don't match. So Media Central Stream will do uh, frame rate conversion into the selected destination codec and frame rates. So just wanted to go back and. Answer that question. Al uh, was able to uh, shoot me a text on that one, so I just wanted to get back to you on that one, Adam. Uh, and also, uh, real quick regarding the uh, uh, the the actual uh, codec. Uh, so all of our backpacks, which is the OU three hundred, uh, the OU six hundred, the OU eight hundred, uh, the six ten, all those are HEVC uh, uh, codec. So that's it's HEVC encoding, which is it's, it's hardware uh, based, right? So that's all, basically what we get out of that. Instead of sending out an H two six four uh, codec, uh, which is requires quite a bit more bandwidth, uh, we use the uh, HEVC codec, uh, and that's 100% of the time is always going to be sending HEVC, uh, which is going to re really require about about between three and three and four megs, depending on on which what type of content you're gonna you're gonna want. Obviously, if you're sending if you're using a, an Ethernet connection, uh, you probably want to may want to have or sports uh, content, you probably want you may want to increase the the bandwidth for that. But um, but that's all uh, can be all configured. And you can, so you can send content too, by the way, either directly off the live view encoders to the receive unit, but you can also go through the matrix as well. Correct. So I uh, just wanted to make sure you guys know that Correct. as well. Oh, there's one more uh, regarding the, uh, my understanding is that SRT can be bonded very uh, effectively in its current generation, hence the value of LRT. So again, uh, the LRT and SRT, so the LRT is, is really just the, con is, is really just the 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 method that we we get we use to get the content from the backpack from the live view uh, from the live view backpack encoder to the station so uh once once we get this the content to the station the decoder is going to spit out an srt stream so it's two basically think of it as two totally different uh, uh workflows there so you have the lrt uh is, is really our mechanism that we use to get the the, the feed the video from the backpack um, and, and the SRT is essentially just another, uh, you know, uh, you can do SRT, RTMP, uh, but it's not going to be, there's not, there's not any bonding uh, involved in that. Yeah, so the SRT is really just the handoff between the receive unit and Media Central Stream. Exactly. Exactly. And then there was a last question here that we see so far is what are the price ranges for live view systems? Uh, you know, our pricing is, uh, you know, we start under $1,000. And we go up to around twenty-five thousand dollars, but it really uh, is dependent on how you kind of configure it, uh, configure the system, right? Because there's data plans involved, and there's servers, and 
it uh, you know each each customer is different on how they configure the system and whether you're an education institution or get nonprofit pricing but you know under a thousand dollars for some of our units and over twenty five thousand dollars for other units so uh, that's a kind of the range if you will for the live view equipment and media central stream is a subscription available annual or or monthly uh, and so I would encourage you to talk to your sales rep for more details but uh, but knowing that that's a, a subscription service offering and uh, like I said, available either as an annual or monthly package. Yeah, we have the same type of subscription now with LiveView. It's called LiveView 360, a subscription service uh, where you get everything included, including unlimited data plans and uh, all the gear that you need. And, um, you know, all of that's available too on our website if you want to find out more information. Uh, there was another question that came in for small companies using solo right now. What would be the next logical step to upgrade to? That would be the LU300. Um, and that's the next step up from the solo model. It takes you from an H264 model to an H265 model. And that's the next step that people uh, move up to. We have a, we do have a trade-in program for your solo. So you can trade it in, get a, uh, a nice uh, little bit of money for your solo and a trade up to uh, the 300. But that's the next logical step. Yep, so if uh, you already have a, a unit, you can basically just buy the connector and buy me a central stream. You've already got the rest of the production tool sets. That's all you need to start, you know, ingesting uh, incoming live view streams into an avid production environment. Exactly. And just like Ray said, I'd encourage you to talk to your local reseller or your local sales rep and uh, we'll uh, be glad to help you out with that. So, uh, Rit, had a, Rit had another question in the uh, Q&A section. Let's see. One point there was talked to strongly slug, sorry, take story slug from news in morning with information metadata. Shooter could pull that slug and tag that information metadata. Uh, so then, yeah, yeah, so this, uh, so there is some work that's happened here. It's not available yet. Uh, so good question, Rit. Um, so there is some work here that basically would tie the live view uh, camera feed to uh, an iNews uh, story, basically. Um, but that is uh, still being worked on. So not available yet. Uh, there's definitely been some work done on both sides to enable uh, what you're talking about, I believe, in that scenario. Um, but uh, not available just yet. Good question. There are, uh, you know, there are other things we're talking about doing. Uh, so. Uh, People have, had, have made requests, feature requests, so we are working on those too. So I would say stay tuned. This is not a uh, one and done integration. Uh, we do definitely plan to build on what's already been uh, brought to market so far. So stay tuned. Any other questions out there? Anybody else have any other questions? Oh, there's one more about uh, uh, contains the SRT stream, also embedded time code and how many audio channels. So it's going to depend on the, uh, uh, if you have a single channel, uh, uh, a single camera going to, to an encoder, uh, you can do uh, two, four, or even up to 16 channels, uh, depending on, on, on which encoder you're using. Uh, but uh, yeah, typically it's going to be two to, two to four channels for, for audio. And, and it does uh, include the, basically the way, the way that uh, Livey does is it basically takes the, the content and, and, and it takes the whole everything and it keeps it as 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 whatever you're sending uh all the way through so um so depending on what uh, you know we just simply do an hevc encoding but uh, otherwise we do we do uh, maintain the uh, the embedded time code and so forth the audio channels yep and uh and then al is just letting me know that uh we uh, don't have time code yet on the media central stream side yet but we will it's coming um and we can do up to eight audio channels in media central stream today one more question, uh, Jose, uh, asking about uh, minimum tra uh, trans needed in uh, is four megabits per second. So yeah, that is that is correct. So for, and actually, uh, we've actually there's actually been some some testing uh, that's been done, and people have actually gone to air with with actually just three megs. Um, so but but yeah, four megs is is pretty much a, a kind of a, of a standard that that uh, everybody uses with uh, with HEVC. Uh, so yeah, HVC is a uh, is very efficient. So so yeah, four megs uh, is, is is plenty. Now if you want if you have a lot of motion uh, sports, uh, then you, you probably want to uh, get that uh, uh, tweaked up some more. Maybe maybe five or six megs or even higher. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, for just kind of talking heads type of uh, workflows, yeah, uh, four megs is going to be perfect. 
Excellent. Well, fantastic questions, great engagement. Thank you all for being a part of this session today. Um, I want to thank LiveView for inviting Avid to be part of this uh, webinar. It's been fantastic. And so this recording will go out to everybody uh, after uh, this is over. Um, we'll also make it available on a number of different uh, feeds, right, uh, and social channels. Uh, we'll also answer all the questions and send those along as well. If you have any uh, need for any more information, I would encourage you to either go to LiveView.com or Avid.com. Um, and if you need any information, feel free to email any one of us at any time. Um, and we'll certainly help you uh, get rolling. So thank you again, everybody. We really appreciate you all taking the time for today. We hope you have a good rest of your day. Yeah, thank you everybody for attending. Take care. All right. Thank you guys.